What's up guys, in this video we're going to break down the smash route combo. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly what the smash route combo is, any alterations you can add to it, how the reads are supposed to go, and what the actual route combo is supposed to do to affect the defense so you guys can add it to your game as soon as possible. Like always with every route combo every single year, like they're supposed to work but get in every single year in practice mode and test it because there may be a few differences timing differences coverage some coverages may work better or may um work worse against the route combo depending on what year it just it's, a, it's, a, it's programming guys so just get into practice mode and actually just take a look at it and just rehash the information i'm giving you in that year's particular madden so let's get into it so this is the best formation that I could showcase the smash route combo. Now I have I'm in a five wide formation, but you can you can find smash route combos in you know regular twins formations, you know regular spread formations. But this is just easier to show things from in this uh, just just the quick breakdown. So what the smash route combo is is particular what you see from both outside receivers on both sides of the field now it is a baby hitch from the outside receiver and a post I mean a corner route from the slot receiver that is in essence what the smash route combo is now if you want to have a three receiver side or whatever that post still works as you know traditional traditionally what you'll see you know um, stock integrated into the plays in Madden is if there's a three receiver side you'll see a post most likely like you see on the right side of the field but what I have always loved to do is I depending on you have to test these things every single year I would either go with a streak route from the slot receiver the a slot receiver or I'll put him in a fade depending on the year the year of the Madden it just affects the defense differently but I like that adjustment over having a post over um, most defenses so that's what I normally go with to accent my smash rock combo if I'm having a three wide receiver side so another adjustment you can make is if we'll get into the timing and everything a little bit later with the play but if the timing of the reads of you know the baby hitch is too quick for you you can go ahead and put him on an out route or the outside baby hitch you can put him on an out route or you can put them on a zig route or if you like the the, the spacing difference if depends on it depends on how you feel your your point of view I can't tell you how to think in this regard put him on a smoke screen that smoke screen difference from that baby hitch it may only show up as like two or three yards but that's two or three yards difference that may make it easier for you to actually run the route combo but most times I'll just stick with the baby hitch because I just like the baby hitch and some years you'll have better animations for after the catch so you may go with the baby hitch or you may go with the, any of the other adjustments I mentioned earlier it just depends on what year you got to test these things out guys so what the smash route combo is it's a high low on the outside of the field it's specifically a high low on the flat defender or curl flat defender that is who this route combo is attacking now let's get into let's just this I've already went through the semantics let's get into just a basic play just so you can see exactly how things are working I'm going to snap the ball then I'm gonna take a sack I'm gonna get to the replay and show you exactly what's going on so we have the this is the play that we have we have smash I went to a five wide receiver set so I can show you a three wide receiver side as well as a two wide receiver side all in the same play all in the same replay that's why I liked this formation but like I said you can have many different formations and this is just a standard cover three defense so I'm gonna snap the ball wait for the play to develop a little bit take a sack then we're gonna head into the replay and I can show you exactly what's going on so we'll take a look at the three wide receiver side first. Like I said, it's a high low on the outside receiver, on the outside of the field. As you can see, the baby hitch is sitting down and the uh, 
the corner is going over top. They're literally in the same position, just at different depths. They're high lowing this guy right here. So the way that you throw smash, the way that you read smash and you will throw smash is you specifically are looking at the guy that's running the corner or if they're, depending on positions, you're gonna have this guy here running the corner and you can have this guy here running the seam. Doesn't really matter, but traditionally, traditionally you'll have this guy running the corner. But you'll look at this route right here, the, this guy right here, the guy that's working vertically, whether he's on the corner or the seam, does he get jammed? Yes or no? Yes, that more than likely that means, again, test this every single year, he won't be able to get out here for the quick hitch throw. That's the number one read. You're seeing if there's a window for you to get that quick hitch out the way. If it isn't immediate, or if there is not an immediate window there, don't worry about it. Let the play develop. Trust your boy, trust your players, trust the play concept. But like I showed, as the play develops, it's a high low over whoever the flat defender or the curl flat defender is. And then he'll just have to make a choice. Who are you defending? Are you defending the corner or are you defending the baby hitch? Whoever he's not defending, that's where you go with the ball. Let's take a look at the, uh, the two wide receiver side. Like I said, you're looking to see does this guy that's working vertically, does he get jammed off the ball? Yes or no? Yes in this situation, baby hitch is right here for the taking. But since it's a two wide receiver side with the smash concept and a traditional cover three um, play, this uh, this corner is able to take the the uh, the corner route, allowing this uh, this curl flat defender to just sit on this baby hitch, which is why I like having the seam because with the seam or fade route, depending on what you know, depending on the game. Depending on what year you're in, he takes the attention of this corner, which potentially opens up your boy right here. So that is the pretty much the basic mindset of throwing the of the smash route combo. I've shown you the um, cover three with tradition the traditional cover three. Let's take a look at cover three with hard flats on the field. I'm pretty sure you can see, you can imagine how this is going to go, but let's take a look at it anyway. All right, all right. So, like I said, your first read is you're seeing what's going on with this guy. Is he getting jammed? Is he not? He's, he's getting free released. So, as soon as you see he's getting free released, you should already know in your mind He's taking this baby hitch. There's nothing you can do. Don't look for this baby hitch anymore. But then you're, you're, look, you're letting the play develop. And you're seeing what's happening between these receivers and the defensive backs right now. He's taking attention of the corner. Which leaves this corner route wide open for the taking. Inversely, on the two wide receiver set, the two wide receiver side, again, test this every single year. More than likely, if you have hard flats in a cover three scenario, you already know this guy is getting out of there. He's not getting jammed. He's taking this baby hitch, which frees up this corner to easily slide in to guard this corner route. So then it becomes a one-on-one -on -one catch scenario. Do you have the guy to do it? Do you even want to test it? You have to decide these things on your own, test it in practice mode. So that's the pretty much the smash concept, how it works against cover three. Let's take a look at cover two. We're gonna take a look at two cover two scenarios. Um, we're gonna take a look at cover two of hard flats first and foremost. And then, we're, then we will get into the cover two with cloud flats. So, Took the sack, let's get into the replay. Now cover two can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to seeing multiple different coverages or if you're not experienced in Madden. Just take a look at how to read 
uh, different coverages. It's very, very simple once you get into it, but if you're uh, a beginner at reading coverages, it can be a little tricky at first. But stick to your progressions. Like I said, look and see what's happening with your man right here that's working vertically. Does he get jammed? Yes, he gets jammed. So you move your eyes to the outside. <laughs> he got a he got jammed really bad actually because he get he got washed over. So you don't really have to move your eyes too much. But once he gets jammed, move your eyes to see what's happening immediately to the outside. The corner's sitting on him right now. You know there's nowhere to go, but you already know what you're playing with. You know what routes you have on the field. You got this guy attacking vertically, so they have to account for him. So the safety is guarding him. So a nice little crease opens up to throw to your boy on the corner route. So that's cover two with hard flats. Let's take a look at the other side. Same thing. He gets jammed. Move your eyes to the outside. Oh, you see the corner sitting right here? If it's only a two wide receiver side, move your eyes back here and see what happens. Does he run with him or not? He doesn't. Throw the easy completion to your boy running the corner. So that's smash on both sides, uh, three wide receiver and two wide receiver with hard flats against cover two with hard flats. Let's take a look at cover two with cloud flats. Again, same setup. We'll take the sack. Look at this. That's great blocking for a team that's rated really low right now. But, <laughs> alright, let's get into this replay. Reads stay the same. Your reads stay the same. What's going on with this guy? He gets bumped, so move your eyes. He got bumped really bad again. Move your eyes to the outside. You see the corner initially is sitting on it. So you move your eyes to see what's going on down here. Oh, both these guys, he's taking attention of the, of the safety. Now, depending on what year, I didn't mention this earlier, depending on what year of Madden you're playing and how they program the game for that specific year, that seam route could be a touchdown. Depending on if you're able to lead pass hard into the inside, into, the, into this area right here, click on to make a catch, that could be a touchdown. It just depends on what year of Madden and how you just have to get in practice mode and test ability to make different throws. Because um, this right here is Madden 19, but let's say like three, four years ago, this is a hard lead pass inside for a touchdown. It gets all cover twos. So you just have to you know get in the, get in the game and test. But once you see, okay, this but the the second off of him in the cloud flats, cover two of cloud flats, that throws that gives you an easy check down right here to this guy. For just for timing's sake, look and see how long it takes into the play for this to happen. So right right now you have to throw. You can throw this right now. Your corner isn't even like fully developed yet. So that get that lets you know that this doesn't take too long to happen. It's an easy read to make if you uh, if you're facing cover 2 of cloud flats, same thing on the two wide receiver side. See look at your look at your man right here. He gets jammed, move your eyes to the outside. The corner is with him right now. So you move your eyes down here again that you see that dropping with him. Move your eyes back here for the easy throw and completion to your boy on the baby hitch. Now, right now I'm going to talk about the timing, it, the timing differences with um with the different outside routes you can put. So you've seen the baby hitch, so I'm going to show you the baby hitch, the speed out, and the um and the whip for all for the outside receiver. We're going to just uh, stick to X. So right now we're just looking at timing of different routes because depending on how fast you're able to make reads, spacing, you may want to you know go a different alternative than the baby hitch. So we'll just take a look at the baby hitch. Just so you understand the speed and the spacing of the baby hitch. The speed is rather quickly, you're able to throw Pretty much at this point right here, you can make this throw. At this point right here, you can make the throw. The ball is going to be placed about the midway point between 
the numbers and the sideline. So that's perspective just so you can have that in your mental. Let's take a look at the smoke screen with X and see how that works. Throw it all the way. Get to the replay, show you guys real quick. So unlike the baby hitch, which had pretty much like a three yard gainer, he's sitting right here. So he's not getting vertically upfield, which which alternatively creates more space, more separation, more instant separation for this quick throw. And also, it's the distance is pretty much the same as, you know, it's between the numbers and the sideline. But the difference between that and the baby hitch is just he isn't working vertically, so he's not running into coverage per se. The coverage has to come to him. Let's look at the speed out. And I'm only just shifting the defense just so you can have a consistent, you know, defensive look to compare off of. Alright, play's done. Throw the ball away. Hit the replay. Of all speed outs, you're able to throw them pretty much at this breaking point right here. So at time of throw, it's pretty much the same thing as the, um, the baby hitch. He's getting vertically, but he's also getting outside. So he's also running away from any kind of flat or curl flat coverage as shown right here from the curl flat on the defense he's working away from him so imagine if you um have the ball on the wide side because right now the ball's in the middle of the field imagine if the ball's on the right hash for an example and you were to run something like this he has more space to work in this case you just have to possession catch and um if your read's a little late, you can possession catch, and that's about it. You get in about three to four to five yards, maybe. Um, depending on how quick you're able to make your read and quick, how quick you're able to make your throw and everything, you may be able to make a move and get up the field for extra you know, uh, yards after catch with the ball in the middle of the field. But if the ball's on the right hand, you're definitely able to make a, a play after the catch. Uh, okay, so we cover you know, the speed of the throw, the positioning and everything that's pretty much about it uh, let's take a look at the whip so you understand that as well again cover three for consistency let's hit the replay so really the only difference between the whip and the speed out is speed so they're getting to the same location the whip just makes it an easier more defined read but still allows him to work outside so he gets the benefit of working outside the same benefit you have from the speed out you have but you also have the benefit of it developing longer which could help or hurt depending on the situation if they um already kind of keyed into it you would more likely want to speed out so he can quickly just get away from the uh, coverage but the whip works in the sense of if they don't have a defense set up to take away that area of the field it just gives you more time to make that read for that throw so you're getting pretty much the same benefits of yards gained as well as um like I said before, the positioning of working outside, it just takes longer. So those are the different scenarios that you, that is brought up with the smash route concept. So um, like I said, the only real adjustments that I personally like to make from year to year is I'll put this this guy on a third wide receiver, I'll put him on, this, on a streak, or I'll put him on a fade. Depending on how the game works on that particular year, you find out within like three minutes of practice mode which one works better on in different situations. It's very easy to test against different coverages. Um, 
there are situations where you would like to keep this post. One example is the stock play. Um, this is cover for quarters. Cover for quarters. There's a difference between cover for palms and um, cover for drop. This is cover for quarters. So let's just run this real quickly just so you can see exactly the benefits of having this post. But tr traditionally, I will not go with that post unless I know for a fact you're running quarters. If you're running quarters, I'll, I'll keep the post in. So this is how this play works against quarters. He is manned up on the safety. In this particular look, he's manned up on the safety. So the safety has to chase. The safety is in essence manned up has to chase this post man to man, which creates a good inside passing lane. And let's say you have a, a traditional smash play. So you have this guy that's on a, on a corner route that's having to be guarded, getting the attention by the safety as well on this side. He's pulling this safety out the middle of the field. And he, this guy is running away from his safety in man coverage per se, which gives so much open field all this open grass to hit that post. So all this, all the reads stay the same if you're going against cover for quarters, but just be aware of what's going on with the safety. So if you don't get what you um, what you what you're looking for early with the baby hitch and all that in the third, look and stay patient, and especially if you know they're running quarters, keep that post in. So that is the smash route concept. I've pretty much covered everything. This is the most comprehensive smash guide ever, I would say, as far as Madden is concerned. So hopefully you guys got some gems. It's a very good play to add to your database. You get some good yardage, some good first downs out of this play. Hopefully you learned some. This is smash, guys.